G'day guys, Billy here from West Australia. Well guys, very very unusual day today. You know why? We're in the middle of winter. That's absolutely beautiful day. 20 degrees Celsius today. Really really unusual and I think um, in a few more days it's going to be even 21. So absolutely beautiful weather guys. I'm going to make the most of it. So I'm just getting motivated in the morning, starting my chores, doing my washing again, towels. These are all the towels from the cat. Um, so I'm training my feral cat. Got a video of that coming up very shortly about my feral cat why it's on a, on a lead. It's a mouser, a ratter, training it. And that's his little bed hanging there, airing. Doing all my washing too at the moment guys. So I'm draining all my, currently I'm draining all my uh, washing water onto my orange tree, my fruit tree in the distance over there. Just trying to soak all the nice into the soil. Um, but anyway guys, I just thought I'd do a bit of an update on my uh, slop buckets and give you a few tips. Okay, so these are my slop buckets basically. This is my shower buckets. I stand over these two buckets right there when I have a shower. And these are my kitchen slop buckets. So no water goes in my plumbing pipes anymore basically. Uh, down my uh, kitchen drain and stuff so it all goes into my garden I'll put a really good link below guys about slot buckets so check out the link below but this is basically part three uh, some more tips I just want to show you guys some really good examples of uh, how to use a slot bucket again what I do and how I keep my kitchen nice and clean and mouse free and so much more but anyway guys so this is basically what sits in my kitchen sink uh, a lot of English people use you know tubs in their sinks it's very very uncommon in Australia very very rare when people see people using uh, their these tubs uh, in their sinks in uh, on TV in England it's people kind of question why are they doing that for but you know basically I suppose just keeping their plumbing pipes clean so I've been doing it guys for probably the last couple of years and it's absolutely amazing so and you know I've just turned my garden around um, keeping retaining all the moisture and so forth but anyway guys so obviously it does get dirty the tub this is about two years old so I'm just going to give it a quick clean just a rough clean guys I'll do a proper clean after this video but anyway I've got a little bit of detergent in here but a really really good way of cleaning these tubs a natural way is to just grab your little um, brush and a bit of dirt like works as like sandpaper and just like that guys just, and that'll remove all the stains and bring it all the way back basically like brand new so like I say everyone I won't you know I'll just do a quick clean and just after this video I'll do it properly and then I air it out in the sun you know or the beautiful sun rays will you know make it nice and clean and so forth but this is just a quick example really really common sense fellas sand i've got sand everywhere like that on the brush and you wipe it around so it's hard when i've got one hand guys that'll remove any fat sometimes when you fill up the dish um the tub um when you're washing dishes um you know there'll be a, a line of fat around the edge of the um of the uh, plastic tub also another big inspiration too fellas for doing this is that a lot of indian and pakistani people a lot of asian people just recycle literally everything you know nothing gets thrown out basically and everything even like plastic tubs and buckets and anything that can be used to store food and you know what i mean nothing gets wasted you know what, what happens here in australia it's shameful like I say guys, this is just a bit of an example, it's not going to be perfect, and I'll, I'll do it properly in a minute, but basically just like that, give it a good clean, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. We'll go back to the slop buckets fellas. So, alright, just a, another couple of tips everyone. So, packets of chips fellas, just to make more room in your bin, when you finish with your big packets of chips, just fold it all up into a square and a peg, and leave it there for about a week, and that will come off. You know, absolutely beautiful. Just creates a little bit more storage space in your bin. Like that, you know what I mean. And totally empty all the chip crumbs in your slop bucket. Everything, because it's all going to be compost for the worms and all of that stuff. So when you eat crisps, chips and crackers and any any um, plastic bag, like food storage bag, 
crisp bags and so forth are always going to have crumbs in them guys so just try and empty all of the crumbs up into your slot bucket because otherwise that's how mice are going to get into your house mice and bugs and everything else they can smell it from a mile away so just make sure any type of packet uh, biscuits all of the crumbs when you finish your packet of biscuits and so forth put it in your slot bucket and it will create a beautiful compost mix and you know just think about after a couple of years you know you're gonna have probably over a hundred kilograms of crumbs I don't know crumbs and, uh, bread crumbs bread bags uh, all going in the slot bucks onto your beautiful vegetable gardens compost you know your trees and so forth wash out your milk um, milk wash these out of water tip it in there like that this kind of stuff you know just make sure all of these um, containers are clean fellas when you put it in your bin because like I say you're just going to risk um, attract mice and rodents and so forth meat trays meat trays are another good thing fellas so when I do finish with uh, like meat trays chicken steak etc I hate these meat trays they're absolutely disgusting so are these should be banned but once again don't put this in your rubbish bin inside the house you know when it's got all the blood and all of that kind of stuff put it in your slop bucket all right I've already this has already been in the slop bucket I just took this out of my recycling bag dog rolls same thing fellas you know you're always gonna have meat stuck in the bottom of these little the ends of the dog rolls so what I do stick it in there and it's just gonna the meat will fall off into the water anything guys just use your imagination put it all in your slot bucket plastic bags this is another thing this is some chicken I opened last night some chicken wings for my dogs and the cats you know it's all got blood in it fellas so just put the bag in there grab a spoon and stir it around a wooden spoon or something like that and get as much as that blood out and when you're finished with all this stuff take you know when you empty it on your gardens pick it up let it dry in the sun and then put it in your recycling bag so this is my plastic recycling bag guys so it's all full of dog you know dog cans and you know anything what needs to be recycled all goes in this bin outside so I've got no smells inside and when the recycling uh, truck comes I just carry this bag around the front chuck it in my wheelie bin and the goat gets emptied into into the truck same thing with um you know when you have dinner you uh, or your um bowls of soup etc you know you can um it's really hard for me to do this one-handed fellas but basically you hold the plate and get a cup of water or a, you know and pour the cup of water on the plate so all the crumbs and all the sauce and all the juices the blood from the steak etc all goes in, in in your slop bucket it doesn't go in your sink okay because eventually it's all going to block up your plumbing your plumbing pipes you know what I mean so you just want to try and keep your plumbing pipes in your house nice and clean because one day it's all going to catch up with you you might have to get your plumbing pipes replaced because your plumbing might get blocked full of uh, you know hair and grease and all that kind of stuff guys so just a really really common um, you know some tips but we're going to empty these guys and I'll show you a few more things all right when I want to show you about dog food cans and cat cans and soup cans and baked bean cans and everything else but also fellas just be careful this is way too full I've done my shoulder rotary cuff injury from carrying these buckets when they're totally full usually see all the stuff floating in there but we can't see it but usually I just try and fill it up halfway fellas when you're carrying these buckets every day for years on end it's just twisting your shoulder and your arms I've got two I've got one serious rotary cuff injury right now from doing it and uh, the other one's playing up as well but it's just starting to get better after about two months guys but anyway let's go and empty this and I'll show you what I mean um, all right we'll just do it here this is one of my veggie gardens guys nice veggies going there should have been picked ages ago I think these are radishes possibly or right, everything in here celery um, but yeah we'll empty this and we'll talk about these cans so one-handed fellas there might be a yep there's gonna be some cans in here so that's what I mean guys 
see. So cat food cans, see all the meat, all the cat food meat still stuck on the edges. If you put that in your slop bucket fellas, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful compost mix for your vegetable garden, your trees, what you're growing, anything. So what I usually do, if it's still got meat in like that, I just chuck it back in the bucket for the next trip. So this one's pretty well clean. And then I just dry them out. We'll put that one back in, it's got mud in it now. But when they're all dried guys, when they're all dried, I'll just put them in the uh, recycling bin. Like that. So anything fellas, dog food cans, soup cans, uh, tuna cans. It's, tuna's a really, really good one fellas. There's always going to be heaps and heaps of tuna left in the can. You'd be surprised and when you are uh, it's just gonna be a beautiful compost mix and plastic bags like that guys I just usually let it dry out and then I come back in a few days and put it in the compost bin in the uh, sorry the recycling bin all right so and then what I do is grab my other my other slot bucket We'll talk about that one in a minute. This is a new slop bucket. Notice how it's all nice and clean, guys, around the edges. And look at this one. This slop bucket's about two years old. And look at all the fat around the edge. Doesn't really smell, fellas, so that's what I do is just air it out in the sun. Air it out in the sun, and just the sun just cleans it all, basically. You can see all that fat. So all of that fat goes in your um, kitchen sink your plumbing pipes and eventually it's going to catch up for you guys right so I'll just grab something we'll give this a stir we'll give this one a little bit of a stir guys and see if there's any see if you can see any like food scraps and so forth probably not probably not guys but anyway so that's it fellas just uh, how to use a, a bit of an update on using a kitchen slot bucket and just trying to keep your kitchen nice and clean, rodent, rodent free and uh, so forth. And these are some nice beetroots. Look at that, look here. See all the food scraps in there, all the crumbs. Look at all the crumbs. All of that ends up in your rubbish bin. That's why you're getting mice in your house, everyone. And all of this turns into beautiful worm food. Worm food for your worms. The microbes and all the bugs. And just creates a beautiful homemade healthy fertilizer. And here's a tin of spaghetti. All nice and clean. See that? All beautiful and clean, guys. All right, guys. Thanks heaps for watching. So just think about it. Start your own veggie garden and start using a slop bucket. It's amazing, fellas. Just try and keep your kitchen nice and clean. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.